ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them. On ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten your teeth, fix an achy back, get that mole checked out or anything else. Go to ZocDoc.com slash rivalry and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your research for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc.com slash rivalry. ZocDoc.com slash rivalry. All right, listen all, for what we understand, yeah, the episode where we was doing British accents was smashing. Everyone was obsessed. Babes, so, babes, they loved it so much. They loved it really, they loved it, they loved it a lot. They really did. The comments were mad. Every mad. single one. Everyone was like, every single one. Every episode like this never stop. Um, and, and, and right for your Scottish accent, they were loving it. Yeah, you know, it, do you know what I mean? It's just like the way that we just vibe and like talk like that. Like they, they just really love it and they really love yeah, how like, we gotta stop before they before they log out. We gotta stop before they unsubscribe. <laughs> we literally play too much. Yo, they said y'all niggas need to stop playing in our motherfucking places with these dumb ass accents. Y'all sound dumb. I wanna I wanna read some comments because some of the comments they were so I was, mean. I was cracking up reading some of the comments. I was Yo, rolling. You trying to have fun or something like y'all look dumb as hell. <laughs> I'm gonna read some too because they were out of control. This is from Lou LaFandango. Oh my god, I'm five minutes into the accents, and as a Brit, I can't cope. Crying emoji. It's giving more Aussie than Brit. It's painful. And from the comments, it looks like it's all the way through. I'm not gonna make it. Exclamation! Exclamation! <laughs> Bob and Mo- wait. Uh, Bob and Monet accents really brought us on a tour of the co- of the Commonwealth. <laughs> they covered England, Scotland. Wales, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, <laughs> Singapore, St. Lucia, Cyprus. <laughs> this was wild. Yeah. Someone said, if, if, y'all, don't do, if y'all don't do terrible Jafakan accents next, I'm, I'm going to be pissed. Can you imagine? Yo, Brooke up, Brooke up. I don't know how to so do Jafakan. Nearly know. press report. <laughs> so I saw that. That would crack me up. Someone's going to report our content. Anyway, yeah. yeah, it was yeah. They were they were not feeling the accent, so we sh- w- notes received, and we will not be doing accents anymore. We got it. We got it. Bob, it's the grand finale of RuPaul's Drag Race All Star Seven. Racers, racist. Start your engine and make <laughs> Stacey Abrams win. Actually, <laughs> okay. Overall, going through this final episode, where do you think this season? Well, I mean, I guess we should do it at the end. Never about where it ranks in terms of drag seasons for you. We'll do it at the end. It makes sense to do it at the end. Can we, can we do all star seasons? Because I don't want to do. I don't want to do it with the reggae seasons. Like I don't want to do. I want to mix it with the reggae seasons because I think if we do, it's gonna reggae. Go down. Reggae. It's like it's like short for regular. It's oh it's restaurant. God. It's a restaurant term. People say oh. reggae in restaurants a lot. They say, "Can I get a reggae potato?" Like meaning, I want a regular. I never knew that. Yeah. Can I get a reggae? What? Meaning Got I just need it. the I need the Those regular. boxes behind you are so tripping me out. I just every I just can't. I can you please not send in front of these boxes? I can't. I'm gonna you'll you know what you'll do is what'll happen. You no, will but, I'll manage. Can you sit in front of a reggae wall? Banda <laughs> 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 Twaste! Listen, <laughs> the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race All's Star All's All Stars. <laughs> oh my god wait really quick i know it's not rivalry i went to the laugh factory last night for chocolate sundays and it was so good there was so many brilliant comics there was this guy i forget his name france france and he did this whole bit about taking the bus in la and it was slightly problematic but bitch i was howling it was such a great show Somebody was like, Bob, you should do Chuck on Sundays. And I was like, you can't just roll up and decide. Yeah. Be telling, like, before I got on Dragon Force, I'd be like, you should do Drag Race. <laughs> like, like, why do you think this works? You ever have people tell you, you should be on, why are you on Broadway? Bitch, you think yeah. I just walk? Give me a roll. <laughs> like, I would, love yeah. to, I would love to do Chuck on Sunday. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it was. It's, I, I want to. We, we should go if if we're both in town on a Sunday again. But well, I'll be I'll be here for a few Sundays. Um, we should definitely go together. If we're on a Sunday, we're going to church. 
That's where you need to go. That's where you, that's okay, your first honestly, stop. That's your first nigga, stop. I, bitch, that's where you, bitch, you know what? I would say you should go, but you will not make it through the front door. You, I bitch, your, the crown of your head will start to sizzle as soon as you put up your you foot in that damn chair. Lord, I lift your name on high. <laughs> he came from heaven. <laughs> to shine away. Okay, wait. All I'm saying is we, we need to go to your money. How are you feeling going into the finale of All Star 7? Going into the finale of All Star 7, I have to tell you, my odds never felt better because I'm like, I have the most stars. A bitch is making money moves. I'm like, you coming in, Jada, you stay out. They got a bitch really on her bad bitch shit. And I know. You're the shift shift manager. You're the shift leader. (laughs) Monet turn her game down a little bit. Okay, I will. And then. Yeah, drag Monet. Okay, now split the difference, Mo. Split the difference. And I am, I also, I know I'm a really good lip syncer. I know that I can take any of these bitches in the lip sync. I mean, Shea kool is the only person I'm nervous of because Shea has beaten me in the first one and the last lip sync of the season. Yeah. So, Shea, just, Shea just, Shea, talking about, be, Shea did this to you two times. Thing like a so, supernova. Bop, bop, bop. So wait, did she punch me twice or she punched me five times twice? Because you did, Shay did this to you five times. Okay, oh, eight. So she, had a four. Bop, 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 bop. so she punched me five times twice. Got it. I got ten punches from Shay Kool Aid. The math works. Um, but yeah, so Shay's the only one I'm afraid of. I'm like, if I go head to head with Shay, I could probably lose. But I, I beat Trinity in lip sync before, and I know I can beat, um, uh, Jinx in a lip sync. I'm like, there's Jinx can't beat me, homie, on shit. Were you ever like, were you ever like, would you have any thought in your hair if you're like, what if I bought Trinity into the finale and she beats me? Were you, was there even oh. a moment where you were like, what if? I did. I was like, I was like, there is a way, there is a world where I bring Trinity into this lip sync and then she beats me and then everyone say, oh, Trinity, which fans are doing because I beat her and we'll talk about it later. But, oh, I guess Monet was the true win of All Stars for her because she beat Trinity in the flip things. I was like, oh, my God, what if I bring Trinity and she is the one that sends me home with no money? I would be mad. That would be, honestly, I Good would TV. cry. I'm not going to lie. I would cry. <laughs> like, I cry. I mean, if I, I, I cry when I get really stressed out. You know, you go, you go. We have we have so much to cover. I feel like we should probably just jump into the um, yeah, the looks. Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a there's a lot of lip syncs and there's a lot of looks to cover this episode. Yeah, let's start off with the judges. First of all, I know we're gonna get to RuPaul. I Carson looks. I love this. Suit. Do you remember when um, our friend Taylor, a mutual of ours, when he wore that black suit with all the little bugs dangling on it? Taylor did that. Yeah. I don't remember, but I'm sure he did. This Taylor's Taylor, Taylor's very fat. Taylor's legit one of the one of the most fashionable people I know. Yeah, this is what Carson looks like to me. I think Carson is great, but RuPaul, I love this hair. This fucking Horton hair's a dress. Um, yeah, is like beautiful. A I RuPaul looks fucking great. I love this. I want this dress, and with that tiny little waist and such a volume on the top and the bottom, and these these have to be custom dyed or custom stained feathers or maybe they come like that but that's the feathers are really cool yeah this is it's giving the, the snorlax is going to come around the corner any moment and and save rupaul from being um when you think about it girl dr seuss his books were really political like really political bob he had a bunch of racist ones that were banned did you know this dr dr seuss has a whole catalog of racist ass books dr seuss had a fucking agenda honey I know. Well, he he has he was liberal in some spots, and he was very anti Asian in a lot of other spots because he was a, he mm-hmm. was popular during uh, WW World Do. War, yeah, mm-hmm. Do. Um, and obviously there was a lot of um, um, AAPI hate during uh, World War Two because we were battling um, Japan. And I don't know how true this is, but I remember seeing not on TikTok like a, an article on somewhere about how. It was supposed to be Horton, not it was supposed to be, but it's called Horton Hears a Who, but it's supposed to be Horton Hears a Jew, and like like that whole thing, like he's trying to like that, build, girl. No, that can't that's be. What, I don't know how true it is. That's what I read. I'm like, but um, but with all things considered, I'm like that doesn't sound too far from what the well, truth might well, be. I, the reason why I think it might not be is because I I I don't know. Let me just say right now, I do not know what Doctor Seuss's dreams were or his ambitions were, his plans were, but 
I think that his a his AAPI hate stuff was coming from the hate for Japanese people because they were enemies of ours during the war, and he was on the sides of the people who were fighting to help Jewish people. The allies. He was not yeah. pro. Yeah. He was not pro. He was not pro Germany either. He had so. Anyway, long story short is, I was just thinking to myself, he had a lot of really, like, like because the Snorlax was like an environmental piece, and then um, he did, like, slavery pieces. He did some weird stuff. Like, it was, but like, but, like, anyway, very political. Long story short, RuPaul looks like a Dr. Seuss character. And <laughs> we, but, we, were, we were about to go down another avenue, bitch. We were about to start a rivalry, girl. <laughs> girl. And Michelle, okay, part of me loves that she... Because there was a point where Michelle's drag was out of control. I was like, girl, was what are you doing? Much. And it is now very subdued. But that being said, like pretty much usually from the from the neck down, her outfits are pretty plain. But bitch, neck up, Michelle Vis- is living up to that last name. She is giving visage. She is yeah. giving the only... She, Michelle has aged beautifully. Beautifully. Um, I also, I want to say, did you hear, listen, a, a slight little tangent. Did you hear what's happening on Drag Race UK? RuPaul's gone and Michelle stepped in. Yeah. Do you think this is some foreshadowing to what might happen in other, in, in maybe America for all stars or something? What's RuPaul the little long in the tooth? Well, I told y'all this. I said on this podcast, I announced that I think that Raven is being groomed to be the next uh, one of the hosts. Or on the judges panel of RuPaul's Drag Race, and I believe it. And you said hosts. You said hosts. Okay, well, let me amend my fucking statement, bitch. But okay, I'm, just, I'm just keeping you truthful and honest. What you said, bitch. Worry about what you said. Worry about what <laughs> you said. How about that? But now she is. Um, she sat on that judges panel. The only other drag queen I've seen on the judges panel was Candace Kane. Oh yeah, Candace Kane was season six. I believe so. Season six, yeah. Um, really? Yeah. To my knowledge. Yeah. Well, I mean, on, on, a season, on a season with RuPaul, like meeting UK right. or, or, or Merca. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Candace is the only one who's been there. Yeah. So it's, give, it's giving um, RuPaul school for girls, honey. Oh my god! Imagine Raven becomes one of the new judges. On I mean, to be honest, I would really appreciate that and respect that Raven is because does great drag. Raven has been doing drag for two decades. Raven is great in the art. I think Raven would be a great new addition to the judges panel. And I like having. Imagine if it's no drag queens on the judging panel. Like in some of the franchises in some countries, there are no drag queens. I'm like, y'all non drag doing niggas gonna critique me on my makeup and my heels and my. Fuck out of here. You need a drag queen on the panel. They did it to us on our seasons. <laughs> no, people but there was... There, people sitting there no, 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 on the same drag being like, I don't like your blip, 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 blip. What I mean, but like, no, at least RuPaul is there. Like, you have to have a drag queen on the panel. You have to. I look really handsome today. You want to give me a compliment? I love that you're here today. What ain't you? something nice about me. <laughs> Affirm Bob. me. I Bob, I affirm you all the time. I will affirm you when I, I will. You affirm me right now. You don't tell me when to affirm you. I'll affirm you when I want to I'm affirm asked, you. Okay, I said, will you? I said, I didn't say do. I said, will you? Okay, so so say, well, ask me, Monet. Can you affirm me right now? I'm not begging you. Let's go into these looks. So <laughs> the category is uh, Eleganza Extravaganza, and it's like best drag. They used to say best drag, but then Paul started saying Eleganza Extravaganza. Yeah. Are you are you one of those people who puts eleganza when you want to make something like extra? No. <laughs> I'm not. No, I think you know that. Um, oh, Jada so, Essence Hall. Jada looks beautiful. I mean, Jada's face. She has a face that does not quit. And this gown is. Bob and I both know this. Beads are expensive as hell and they're heavy. So I know this just costs this bitch a lot of money. And her Jada is maybe 17 pounds. And so just the fact that she the fact that she's able to walk down the runway and not collapse on the, the weight of this beautiful, expensive garment, that's also commendable. I think Jada looks great. She looks beautiful. Yeah, she looks really stunning. She looks like the lady she bleed here, actually. Yes, and she does. She does. Another thing about French dresses, French dresses, y'all, they do not travel well. 
Like, big, yeah. if you, because the thing is, if one of the beads comes off, they all come off. Like, if the bottom, the bottom bead, not, not all, mm. I mean, on the, on that particular string. That, that yeah. Let me be strings. clear. That, not, not one bead, they all just hit the ground. But when you pull that string, all the beads on that string fall off, but the string is still there. So, beaded fringe, bead, fringe dresses do not travel well. You don't get you a lot like of wear wrap out of it them. in like tissue paper. You have to be like yeah. very careful how you pack it. It's like a lot. But you also can't even like even when you pull it on, you can't just grab it and pull like you would a normal dress because you're grabbing the friend. It, it, you have to really uh, handle it very delicately. Um, when I was on tour uh, with Work the World, the last time I did it, Asia O'Hara had this yellow fringe like mm-hmm. uh, Tweety Bird. It was it looked so expensive. Anyway, she looks stunning. This look I can't even imagine how much this dress costs. Yeah, it's a lot of. Them. I think it's also made by Josh Wanaponte, who is a fabulous designer. He's made a lot of stuff for Jada. I can Jack have myself on. Let's go on to Raja. Oh, you don't have headphones on. Got it. Okay. Oh, okay, what'd you say? I was saying I can hear myself. I'll turn it down a little bit. Yeah, I can't get my headphones to work on this computer. Is this better? Okay. Yes, let me say that. Yeah, that's better. So let's go into Raja. So Raja is like a bug, right? Bugs. He, I think this and her. So this dress and the one she wore for the light up. I th- believe the same designer made both of them. Yes. And, um. And so she's supposed to be like an insect. She's like some alien insect creature. So the rumors about Raja having dressed that she was not allowed to keep. Raja went on the record and, and explained what the truth was. You never heard this this, this this rumor? No. So there's a rumor that was like Raja had a fifteen thousand. Wait, wait, J- Jacob is saying something. We talked about this at the reunion. I know, but 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 we can't. But I'm gonna spill this here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Ramona had left. I stayed behind to talk to Raja because remember Raja was late oh. to the reunion. So yeah. Um, but um, there was the thing like, oh, Raja paid so much money for a dress she wasn't even allowed to keep it. What happened is the person who made these dresses is like some massive designer, and they have an arch like a like a climate controlled archive chamber where they keep their most expensive garments and Raja's like what am I going to do throw it in my like in my in my, in my studio apartment in Koreatown and put it mm-hmm. or, or in my apartment and put it underneath the mountains of drag there it's very expensive stuff so she's like what I do is that I have the designer hold it for me in his space and if I ever need it he'll give it to me but you and I both know sometimes we end up with very expensive garments in some really ridiculous shitty conditions yeah uh, Violet told me that for a long time, I don't know if it still is, but like her, her infamous dress was just like in a corner somewhere. Yeah. Like imagine that dress just in a corner somewhere. It's just, it fucking is with mothballs and shit on it. Yeah. So I think it's actually really fierce and she looks stunning. These sho- the shoes, what is up? Raja has great. Raja Vivian had the best shoes this season, all season long. And Raja, Raja has Vivian monster has Giuseppe feet. Raja yeah. got some concrete slappers. Raja, yeah, Raja and I are the same are the same size. Raja has some gorilla grippers, so I don't. So it is hard to get custom shoes or nice shoes when you have, you know, when you walk around with some Donkey Kongs. Yeah, yeah, Raja looks great. Let's up next the Vivian. The, the Vivian band. is wearing, I believe, this is Jeffrey Kelly. A work. Yeah, this not is American Kelly. designers. Not her turning her back on her UK uh, design. Oh my god, you're so Oh my god, Viv canceled. Viv found so American. <laughs> um, this is Joshua Ponte. I think this is classic. This is very simple. I wish No, wait, you knew. said Jeffrey Kelly. It's Jeffrey Kelly, Joshua Ponte. Oh, sorry, Jeffrey Kelly. Yeah, um I I think I think the dress is beautiful. I, I wish I wish the nude part in the middle was more her color nude, but maybe but I think the idea is supposed to be black mesh on top of her skin yes. which would make it darker. That's what I gathered. Yeah. Yeah. But I think this is classic. It's, it's pretty. It's very pretty. Yeah, but, I mean, pretty. you can't go wrong with ostrich feathers. Ostrich feathers are always making going to look expensive. I like this. I'm, I'm thinking hard about it. I like it. I actually really like it. I think she looks really beautiful. Um, she looks stunning. I think she looks, she looks stunning, darling. Absolutely smashing. Um, honestly, who's going to mess up on this? You know what I mean? Yeah, I want to, I wish I could, I want to start wearing wigs like this again. I miss, not, okay. I want to start, I want to get some, like, one or two styles again that, that like, Jada posted a video of her performing Beyonce's um, Virgo, the Virgo song, and this, like, beautiful brown hair like this, and it was, I was like, I miss synthetic big volume wigs like that. I miss that in my life. 
<laughs> what? I don't know why that's so funny to me because I just remember you being in like these flat human hair waves and being like this. And oh, I this. love that too. But no, you no, you'd be like only this. I never. I, I remember when they, when, they, when they was like I. Also, when they, you do this thing and you will say you want, but you do this thing where you say I only do this, and then I will ask you only, and then you'll say no. What I mean is I mostly, and then I'll say most of, and you'll say you no. Know, what I mean is like right now, like the infamous conversation. I don't know, y'all not gonna. I don't remember this. This is a, this is a long time ago. When Monet infamously was in my basement, she said she only eats organic food. And then oh by the time God. we broke it down, when it was like, what I'm saying is, sometimes I order organic foods. Because, Bob, because when you, you know what I mean. Okay, let me tell you, you know what I mean. I don't. Like, this is new listen, to me. Listen, listen, is, listen. Anyone, I'm learning. Any, but any, everyone else who will listen to the episode, in the comments, they're like, oh, we get what Monet was saying. When I say, you know what I eat, you know that we go out to eat uh, Jacob's Pickle, all that stuff. So obviously, I don't only eat that, but I'm saying That's when why I, I say, was wondering why you were saying I only eat organic. I was so confused. Like, th- that's, in, in my experience, that's not a saying people say when they say, I only do this. But what they mean is, I do it sometimes. And so in my experience, that's not something that I've ever done where I'm like, I only do this. And I kept being like, only? And you were like, only. And then when I pressed you, you were like, well, yeah, I did that. Anyway, um, let's go on to Evie Oddly, who is a cake. A This this thing is on a wheel. There are casters on this. Uh, yeah. she, this is a wild look. Yeah, Evie is a bur- cake, 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 cake. Um, yeah, she put Evie. You know, it reminds me of one of those um, those screaming queens. You ever you ever seen Alex and Screaming Queens? How they do those the, events the, the, the walking girls? tables. The walking tables. That's what it looks like to me. And she, I think Evie made this herself with her, with her drag fam, like stoned it and everything. I mean, it's really beautiful. It's very, it's very Evie oddly, which I absolutely love. Um, and the hair and was looked- like a epoxy thing, like that epoxy spray thing. Yeah, she looks amazing. I love this look. I think this is just great. I love it. Mm-hmm. She looks great. <clears throat> it's going to Jinx Monsoon. Jinx Monsoon. I think she's Joan of Arc, yeah? No. No? She's like a she's like a like a like a LARPing uh like uh f- fairy witch slayer person. Are you sure she's not Joan of Arc? I'm pr- I'm pretty sure. Cause it's Joan of Arc was about. I don't think she was Joan of Arc. What are you about to say? Joan of Arc is what? What are you about to say? Joan of Arc. No, she's doing like something like Daener- like a uh, Game of Thrones type of thing. Oh. Well, I just assume because she's a, a lady in armor that she's Joan of Arc. Maybe that's just me generalizing all the women who wear armor. Um, did Jinx not post her looks? She did post this. I'm pretty sure she did. I'm looking for it. Did she take it down? Mm-hmm. Jinx has such an interesting media, social media presence. Wait, when did... Oh, my God. How long ago did this show end? Bitch, this is the summer. It's fully November. This look was very special to me, inspired by my lifelong love of magic and powerful women. Yeah. The armor was handcrafted and lovingly designed by this person, J. Von Stratton. With a custom sword prop made by this person, who also made a gorgeous emerald crown. The hair was inspired by Miranda Richardson's Queen Mab in the miniseries Merlin. A uh, labor of love across the board. I have very talented, kind friends. Oh, it looks like Jonah works to me. Um, I don't love it. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe because Jinx did a lot of that very, ga- she did a lot of gowns and stuff. In like in a lot of her silhouettes, she tried. I mean, maybe she tried to really go left on this and do something like really, you know, different. And um, I think it's creative. I don't know for for finale eleganza. Like if she would have done like a really fierce like witch, because obviously this is Jinx's that's Jinx's thing. She did some really dope ass witch look, like a black something. I don't know. Maybe that would have been. This feels a little. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't hate it. I just think she could have maybe done something a little more fierce. Did you see when um, what's her name? Um, Kathy and Jimmy back in like the nineties was doing an interview about Hocus Pocus, and she was like, you know, honestly, I didn't want to do anything offensive with being a witch in this movie because she goes, I don't actually know any witches personally, but I know there are witches out there in the world, and I don't want to be offensive. And I was like, wow, she was really Kathy and Jimmy has been ahead of her time for a 
very long time. Caffeine like I really Jimmy. recommend you all look up Caffeine and Jimmy. She is, she is a very, like she has been ahead of her time for a very long time. I was the head of my time in middle school. Well, we, yeah, we know you and your glory holes. You know, we know about your head, your middle school head. That was um, high school. Glory was high school. Middle school, we had no glory holes. Middle school was just straight up face face the dick, real yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Let's go on to Monet Exchange. I look at this picture of myself. I'm like, bitch, my legs look so thick. I don't think I don't think I'm padded here either, or maybe I am. I don't know. Only you have the answer to that question. I don't know. I look. I look very stout are, in this. Like I don't look tall. Are you, just, are you? Is this? Is this the first time you ever noticed that you have thick legs? No, but in this picture, particularly, I'm like I just don't look like tall. Also, I think it's a pose I'm trying to do too. My left leg is shrinking. You know. I guess I think you look nice. I I I think your body looks really nice here, and I, I don't think you look short or anything. But okay. maybe that's because maybe that's because I have context and I know you. So yeah. in my mind, I'm like. I actually just saw a video of Jacob, and I was like, Jacob looks so tall in this video. Like, he looks very tall. Um, I'll show you the video. I, 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 I happen to have it. I already put it on my phone because I was looking at it. Does Jacob look tall in this video? Uh, yeah. I can't really tell. I need to maybe, like, look at it. I think it's because his head is above the TV, and I'm filming from... Anyway, whatever. I think you look really nice. I, I love this outfit. I love this big bow on the back. Uh, I love when you're bald as well. Only thing about only thing is that sometimes your jewelry on your nose, the shadow, you made it like you had a mustache. <laughs> Very like like one of those like little, uh, Italian skinny mustaches. Yeah, like Raj's little uh, uh, John Waters mustache that almost got her eliminated from her skin. Um, <laughs> but other than that little mustache thing, this looks so good. Thank you. This was made by Chris Habana. Made the bodysuit. And the and the the the, the metal pieces and um, Domino made Domino Couture made the bow and the purple stuff. How did you feel about this look? I really loved it. I felt very very like rich. I felt very very fierce. I felt very powerful. I wanted to do like my inter own interpretation of 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 neo African futurism stuff. Like what what maybe someone would be wearing in twenty years to the to the to the to the Emmys. I don't know. Um, just giving Africant. <laughs> Africa, Dabra. I had um, a wig that I was gonna wear with it, but the wig didn't work, so I just I just ended up going bald. Has anyone ever said Africa Dabra? Africa Dabra. Yeah, maybe. Not a black magician named Africa Dabra. <laughs> okay, a black drag queen who's a magician, Africa Dabra. Africa Dabra, I like that. Let's go on. Speaking of Africa Debra, let's go on to Shay Coulee, who's wearing Christopher John Rogers. Christopher John Rogers made this. This is from one of his runway collections. She really bought in some actual pieces. I mean, my big ass right. could literally never. Right? I said I could never fit into this. If Lane Bryant does a runway show, I can wear some of their stuff. Otherwise, but actually, Shay Coulee, Shay, Shay and I are not far off in measurements. So maybe I could fit this. I mean, with extreme core sitting. <laughs> no titties maybe the ass and hips area might be a problem but <laughs> okay if, if i extremely coarse it i, I don't wear titties uh, I, I shave my thighs off i i cut my ass off <laughs> you were wild this is but absolutely this, this, this is a beautiful dress it's absolutely it's i mean so she's but so she's beautiful. also not wearing titties she's not wearing i don't think she's not that's wearing that's what i was either, saying though. that's what i was saying my i wouldn't wear titties bitch um, the silhouette on this is very cool. Funny, I'm not coming like for you, but you're the one chopping off body parts to get in the dress. I'm not coming for you. <laughs> um, and she's wearing, I think Shay's wearing my kitty cat wig because she's like, Monet, do you have, do you happen to have a kitty cat? I was like, of course I do, bitch. Bitch, I went out, I pulled out eight colors. I was like, w w which color you want? Blonde, brown, red, black. <laughs> it was just at all the color. Kitty I cat. wanna cut to the feeling. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Am I uh, blurry? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, just a little. I don't know. Maybe it's the lighting. Is that better? Oh my god, bitch! You became light skin. Do y'all see that? This nigga just can't became light skin. Let's move on. Uh, Shay looks stunning. I I love this look. I love Shay is pretty much consistently beautiful. 
Yeah, I would agree with this. She's a very, Shay's a very pretty lady. Trinity the Tuck. I, this is my favorite look of hers throughout the season. I, Okay, here's what happened with this, all right? So she was going to... Jeff, uh, the designer was supposed to make her dress. It ended up um, arriving not what she wanted. So Trinity had to make this. She had, like... <coughs> she, she had this... She had, she made this outfit there. Trinity made this finale, this her finale eleganza at Drag. I think she may have had that bodysuit, but she made the pink part. Oh, well, I mean... And the harness stuff. that. Yeah. I, I want to try to maybe swap this look with something else and wear one of my other dresses for the finale. Because she, cause Trinity has some really sickening drag this season. Just some insane drag this season, you know? Yeah, yeah. How but do you feel like it work? Um, I like, I think that you lose a lot of how fierce it is because that cat, the whole bodysuit she's wearing is a fully stoned net uh, fabric. So when she came out, it looks like she looks, but she looked like Emma Frost. It looked like her entire body is like glistening but so in pictures well, i wish you didn't cover it up then well you see her, her whole legs and her chest yeah you know what yeah sure so i think it looked better in person than it does in pictures so going into the she done already done had hers as lip syncs so when we did the pit stop what happened was we were watching and we didn't actually see the winner she already done had hers as, nor did we see the last lip sync I'm going to mm-hmm. reiterate that. We did not see the winner of She Didn't Already Had Hers. And we I actually did not see. So you go ahead and watch my pit stop with Thorgy. Me and Thorgy are making up everything after the That is a gag. Pit. Yeah. That is a gag. So and, and I've and I've done a few seasons of the pit stop, and I've I've never um not had that. Like that was the most I've ever not seen and had to make up and like make stuff up. Listen, you don't ride an elevator for the music, and you don't ride an airplane for the movies. So when it comes to audio entertainment, it just makes sense to choose Audible. It's the home for stories told by the biggest stars like Ethan Hawke, Kerry Washington, and Kevin Hart. It's home to epic adventures, chilling mysteries, can't-miss comedies. Audible is the home of storytelling. Let your imagination soar with audiobooks, podcasts, and originals, and discover new worlds, old worlds, and how to make a better world. Audible is the home of storytelling with all your audio entertainment in one app. Find the best of what you love or something new to discover. Audible has an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and so many more. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Members also get full access to a growing selection, including audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts. You can download or stream or include titles that you want. And now, you can even listen to Sibling Rivalry on Audible. How amazing is that? All of your favorite content on one app. Let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. New members can try it for free for 30 days. Just go to audible.com slash rivalry or text rivalry to 500-500. That's audible.com slash rivalry or text rivalry to 500-500 to try Audible free for 30 days. Audible.com slash rivalry so the other day i tried to cancel one of my memberships that i'm subscribed to and it took me i'm not kidding you four different tries like how does it take three hours to deliver a lace front wig but canceling membership takes forever i also had to cancel plans uh for the next several hours listen are you wasting money on subscriptions okay 80 percent of people have a subscription they've forgotten about maybe it's some streaming platform or that you forgot you signed up to but you never tune in to watch that show you're going to watch there's a great app i use that helps me track all of my expenses and because of it, I no longer waste money on subscriptions that I don't even use. You might, you might have heard of it. It's called Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. The app shows all your subscriptions in one place and cancels what you don't want to do. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions that you don't know you were paying for. You may even find out you've been double charged for a subscription. To cancel a subscription, all you have to do is press cancel, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com rivalry. Seriously, it could save you hundreds a year. That's rocketmoney.com slash rivalry. Listen, if you're a fan of it, sushi is incredible, but gas station sushi, not so much. Finding the right sushi makes all the difference. 
And the same goes for finding the right doctor. With ZocDoc, you can find the right doctor for you in your network and in your neighborhood. One that makes you feel like you're in good hands. You're supported and you're heard, even if you're telling them about your favorite sushi place. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. On ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten your teeth, fix an achy back, get that mole checked out, or anything else. ZocDoc's mobile app is easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with a few taps. Now, when you walk into the doctor's office, you're all set to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com rivalry and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash rivalry. ZocDoc.com slash rivalry. Um, but do, are we going to rate the looks as well as the performances? We should we, um, we do a quick overview of the looks. Yeah, yeah, I don't think the looks are like the main thing, but we can talk about them. Why not? Yeah, I, I don't really care much for uh, the Vivian's look, but I love what Evie's wearing. I love this look on Evie. This kind of reminds me of also a little bit of the hair that she wore in her promo for her season. Oh, yeah. It may be the same or something very No, it's similar. not the same. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that... Listen, when you get towards the end of Drag Race, you were just pulling whatever you have left. So that makes sense. I think maybe Viz would have made sense a little more if the garter thing, the garter pants were all went into one shoe. If she bought a booty and covered the booty in that fabric too, then it would look more cohesive. But I, you, we, we talked about this before the podcast. When it has that harsh line at the at the ankle, it's something that it really takes you out of the fantasy, right? Yeah, we all talk about this too. Drag queens will pick their nails, <laughs> their hair, <laughs> custom lashes, new makeup, spend thousands of dollars on an outfit, get a photographer, do a photo shoot, have a videographer, and they will not buy new shoes. They will just grab a shoe at the last possible second. And I, I, I've been good to this too. In fact, the only time I have, the only time I pretty much consistently have shoes that like are specific to my outfit is here. on a weird here. And that's because they are oh aware of that and we we are we're trying to get ahead of it. But bitch, I, I spend so much time getting an outfit and just and just grab a shoe. I used to be that way, but over the past like three years, I would say I I think about this shoe as well because I am so it it always takes me on the fantasy. So as y'all see, this is oh no, this is like half of my shoe collection. Bob knows I have like this in storage plus more in storage. So I've been thinking about this shoe a lot for the past three years. I I I I I, I am that girl. Also at a gig, you don't want to wear new shoes. New shoes. Oh yeah, not new shoes. At a gig, if I'm going to a gig where I'm going to be performing in, well, lately since Bob and I are doing stand up, oh, Bob and I since. Since I'm doing stand up, about the stand up too. I don't. I'm not performing. I'm not. I'm not worried about uh, scraping my shoes or fucking up new shoes. I would wear like some of these nicer ones at the stand up spots. But if it's like at a club where I'm gonna be stepping in piss, somebody gonna gonna gonna, gonna drop a drink on me uh, in the bathroom, bitch. You, you don't go pee and drag in the bathroom. No. You don't ever be at when you used to do bars. You never be at the bar and be like, bitch. I have to pee. Rare, I, I, I mean, I would ra- rarely would I pee in drag. I usually don't. I have a thing when people know me. I drink very little liquids in drag because I have to pee all the time. So I, I, I once I'm starting to get in drag, I go down to like one red, one can of Red Bull, and that is all the liquid I ingest because I have to pee all the time. And then usually by the time I have to pee, I'm out of drag. Usually, oh no, I, well, I have to pee. I, so you're stepping in a bar with with shit. Uh, but you know, I, I so I don't wear like brand new shoes at a gig that are gonna get messed up because I have big feet and it takes a lot to sore shoes for myself. So I'm very cautious of that. I also usually don't, but I don't wear the I don't wear the the, uh, the uncomfortable shoes at the drag at the uh, at the stand up gigs because I'm on a stage like for an hour. Like I'm oh, like I'm in I'm just standing for an hour. I'm jumping around. I'm like doing all this stuff. It is actually easier for me to wear an uncomfortable shoe for one drag number than it is to wear for an hour of stand up on stage. Way easier. Oh, I, 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 I be, I be feeling myself. I be wearing like nice, sexy, little open toe fantasy. Also, but Bob, you, you know, the open toe shoes are so much more comfortable than closed toe shoes. Well, I don't. Not, I always, not, not always for me. Oh, I have wide feet, so when anytime I'm in a closed pump like that, bitch, my feet are. But in a sandal, open toe, I like my feet can be fine. So I love wearing open toe shoes, and I, 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 I don't like performing open toe shoes because, bitch, you are. 
Your, your feet will Naomi Smalls. My, they go over the shoe and clench to, to grip them shoes, girl. Hey, my feet are petite. There's a reason why the word feet rhymes with petite. My feet are like... So that's for everyone. Go, people often look at my feet and go, oh my God, your feet are shockingly small. People say that to me. Like almost... People will hold up shoes and goes, is this Jacob's shoe or your shoe? That happens to me all the time. If y'all believe that shit, then I want RuPaul's Drag Race. always Star like, Star. honestly, Bob, I didn't expect you to be this tall, but even more so, I did not expect your feet to be this skinny and tiny. Moving yeah. right along. So Evie Oddly and and um, and the Viv, they spin the wheel. And, um, uh, oh, no, they, we already know they matched each other. Oh, wait, really quick. Let's go back a little bit. So on the runway, RuPaul has this really emotional moment with us on the runway. Do you remember this? When RuPaul I is do, like, yeah. I, I just so had to see it. I had to see you all come out of And then that was, we were all, it was very, very emotional. Because, again, you know this. It's at the end of the season. Bitch, you have done, at this point, we've done 11 challenges. We've been here for six weeks. We are done. And it is just you when just one little inkling of emotion comes in, everyone we were all on stage. Every single one of us was bawling on stage, like crying. That sounds very beautiful. It really it does. Very I remember you talking, you talking about this moment after um, you got home. You were like, "We all yeah. cried." Yeah, because I mean, I, I and I said before, I love RuPaul so much. RuPaul has changed my life, and I am so grateful for everything that he's done. And just see, just to see, well, him, now, like, she's not going to give you any more chance. You don't have to suck up anymore. She's not going to let you back on. Just say how you really how, feel. Say what you say about her when we're not recording. Just to see how how much RuPaul like feels that too, because a lot of the times you're doing the show and you're like, ah, oh, you know, like you're 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 in your feelings, or whatever. But you know, RuPaul is great, and to see him cry and be so vulnerable and open with us, it really made us feel really good. Because sometimes we get to choose our fa- as gay people, <laughs> we get to choose our fans. <laughs> That's one of my favorite moments. As gay people, we get to choose our favorites. Uh, no, no, uh, no, yeah, no, 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 because you and you, you, you found a way out. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I love it. I love we it. Get to choose our I love um, it. it. It's really beautiful. Um, once they end up, once we find out that the Viv and Evie are, are lip syncing, my first thought is, well, I do think that Evie's going to win. But then again, Viv did beat Evie once this season already. But it was also in an, an impersonation. But anyway, that's not the point. But then once I heard it was salt and pepper push it, I was like, Evie, <laughs> baby, go, let, let me stamp your passport so you can get back to customs. Because honey, <laughs> yeah, as soon as I heard it was salt and pepper push, I was like, can we, uh, can we bring in um, customs <laughs> to send this bitch back to Buckingham Palace? <laughs> And I remember when I and like you know Viv was you know when we found out what the songs were like Viv like what the what the what the songs could be, Viv Viv was like learning because for your group right so the she already done had has this they had the four three songs that they could possibly get and we had the three songs that we could possibly get so you could plan your number what you wanted to do in case you got whatever, and Viv was like, Gail. I need you to I need you to tell me what what, what kind of moves I could do to the song, Gail. And I was like, girl, you gotta do the running man. I like, just think of like like you gotta think of nineties dance moves. I was trying to teach Viv some nineties dance moves. But you know, she, Evie You said you set the Viv up. She did her uh, her TikTok dance move. She did, she did. I didn't I didn't tell her to do that. I did not say do that TikTok shit. I would tell her to do the nineties dance, like the uh, 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 uh. So no one's shocked. Evie Ali won, and she moves on to uh, one step closer to becoming the queen of she didn't already didn't had hers. Is. Up next, we have Raja. And Vivian gets to say her. She gets her scepter, and she gets to say oh, her Oh, yeah, I her love speech. that everyone got scepters, and, and that was so amazing. You, you mean almost everyone? No, you got one at the end. I didn't get to say shit. Everybody got to, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. bitch, I did not get to say anything. Monet, now is the time. I think at the end of the podcast, you can say you can. You should say no, no, bitch. They did me. Let me. When I tell you, I got. <laughs> when I tell you, I got done so dirty this finale. They did not show me getting my scepter. Oh no, I mean, they didn't show me getting my scepter, but they do not show me saying shit. They were like, "I get my scepter, cut." Jinx monsoon, congratulations! I was like. Anyway, moving on. Did you say anything and they cut it out? I yeah, I think I got to say. I'm pretty sure I got to say oh, something. Jinx Monsoon, congratulations! 
Can you see my screen, mother? Yes, I can see your fucking screen. Six months. Six months. <laughs> uh, yeah, Evie wins and she moves on. And next we have Raja versus Jada Essence Hall singing Let's Hear It For The Boy. Okay, I, lo- I, I really love Raja's look. I love this look. Yeah, Raja looks it's really cool. It's not giving 2008, lady, lady, it's, it's giving a 2008, like, pop princess vibe. Raja's, the, that entire jacket, you, again, you can't tell on screen in pictures, but that entire jacket was stoned. I don't know if you remember. She stoned that jacket. She's like, oh, yeah, girl, I just took some mushrooms and I just stoned the shit out of it. Yeah, she was great. And, and Jada looks like a sexy fucking cheerleader. Yeah, Jada looks really good. Um, I, in my humble opinion, I thought Jada won. I thought Raja won. Um, I also want to just have there, if you really want to hear, let's hear it for the boy. I'm just going to let you know, and I know I'm a theater queen, but the Broadway version, baby, when I tell you the Broadway original cast version of let's hear it for the boy is the superior rendition of this song. If you're a drag queen listening to this song, it needs to be the Broadway rendition of let's hear it for the boy. Um, but I thought that Raja did a better job, to be honest, um, I don't think that she crushed Jade. I don't think Jada got like massacred or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I thought I, I, I thought Raja, I mean, I thought Jada won, but I, I, I could see a case for either or, but for me, I was, I saw Jada. I know. Let's go on yeah. to um, Raja versus Evie for the uh, finale SmackDown of Shannon Arden and had hearses. They're doing sisters. They're doing it for themselves by the Eurythmics and Aretha Franklin. I, Absolutely love this song. This is a, it's a great this song. is truly a drag, like a pillar in drag performance. This song, when two drag queens, they have to do a thing. We're both going to wear the same color. I'll be Aretha. You'll be um, um, Annie Lennox. Let's do it. You know? Mm-hmm. And, and um, I think both their looks are fine here. I mean, I, I they both. I actually. I really like Raja's look. Evie's look is fine, um, and I thought that Evie won this lip sync. Down, Evie tore it up. She had that like because you know early in the, the first challenge of the season. Remember when she wore the wig that she reveals to her wig fell off of her head. Um, I don't think maybe y'all saw that in the edit. I don't remember, yes. but but that happened the first challenge. The 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 one where we did the ver- the songs and the verses. Evie's wig fell off of her head. The first in the first take, so I think we just saw that. So I think she was doing a callback to herself, but also a dope reveal, looking like your wig fell off, and you just have your stocking cap on, and she just pulls a stocking, and she has another wig under that. I thought throughout the entire number, I thought Evie crushed it. Yeah, that wig reveal was really bananas, and I was screaming. I mean, it's really hard to figure out a new way to do a wig reveal in the twentieth or twenty first season of RuPaul's Drag Race. It is mm-hmm. practically impossible. To figure out. It's just literally, I think this was literally the 20th season of RuPaul's Drag Race, America. Um, and 21st. 14 yeah, regular. We're, we're, we're late in the game, put it this way. And yeah. she got me. Like, I was like, I felt so bad when I thought her wig was fine. I was like, oh my God, her wig is sliding. Oh my God, her wig fell off. And then when she pulled off the wig, I was like, honestly, she just became the queen of she already didn't have her. That being yeah. said, is this like the queen of all queens. Is this a, an amalgamation of all your work? Is this like a, is this, is this all your work throughout the season or is it just, just the lip sync? I think that for any lip sync for the crown, it should just be the lip sync. Uh, cause then, uh, cause then if you're like looking at the whole season, then what is the point of doing lip sync for the crown? Especially this season, particularly RuPaul is like, your goal is to get to the, you are lip syncing for the crown. If you are doing the lip sync to get the crown, if it is, if you if you already know who you wanted to win by their job in the season, then this should just be like a try to get some some more money. Uh, uh, let's try to lip sync for some more money, not lip syncing for the crown. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think it should be like in the challenges of an all star season where you're lip syncing for the win. Like there's the lip sync and the performance that both go toward whether or not you win this week so like if someone's if someone had like a really brilliant snatch game but they weren't great at the lip sync i think it should be the performance and the like the, the performance and the challenge and the lip sync um but i i don't fucking make the rules so I'm, that's just my opinion like i i do think that i do think that throughout the season 
Raja had a stronger body of work than Evie did, but I do think in this lip sync, Evie did a much better job. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think they're listening for the crown. I think the crown, lips, the lip sync is the thing that matters at this point. Like your so performance then what, throughout so the, then season, what are you doing the season, the got you to this point. You would your your performances through the, through the season got you this time to win stars to get to this point. Now you're here. You're lip syncing for the crown. You're lip syncing for she already has it, had hers. Is. Your package throughout the season is what gets you here. Now from here on, you're lip syncing to get the thing that you want. The, the she already had hers is, or the crown. Well, you all comment below. Do you think it should be a combination of both, all things considered, or should it be season and then the SmackDown separate? Let, let us know what you think below. Like, like for example, Sasha Valor, right? Shea kool bodied the entire season. So if you, if, if but if Sasha had had a, had a great moment of lip sync, so that. Because at, at that this is the first season then when RuPaul decides to do a lip sync for the crown. So it was like they, they competed to get to this point. But when you get to the final, for the, to the final episode, now you're lip syncing to this is what counts. This is the thing that counts for this moment. But what I'm saying is what Sasha Velour did at, at the finale against Shea Coule is literally one of the most iconic things in the history of RuPaul's Drag Race. All seasons, all franchises, every continent. Literally one of the most iconic things. So that adds to this massive body of work that she had. I don't opinion. think so. I don't think so. I, because then, because then there's no, how does that trump the a brilliant job of four challenge wins that Shea Coulee did the whole season? So then, so, so all the, so those, so those nine, uh, 10 weeks of Shea turning the competition, one Rose Petal reveal trumps all of that and erases all of that work for 10 weeks. I think it depends on how impactful the Rose Petal thing was versus how impactful Shea's job on the season was. And obviously, it's all based on someone's opinion. So everyone yeah. has different opinions, and you know, opinions are completely subjective. Um, so, in 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 my opinion, that rose petal thing is a huge cultural moment for drag. It is like everyone was doing it. It was massive. Go ahead, Jacob. But Monet's lip sync also could have been that. What do you mean could have been? Like we didn't see, we saw a very edited version of that lip sync, and we don't know. We'll get to Monet. Like, we'll we'll get to but, Monet. But like did. in general, like the lip syncs are edited. So yes, like Sasha's, it is an iconic moment. But there are also maybe iconic moments in lip syncs that were missed. So yeah, I, I'm not judging based on what I didn't see. I, I, I'm only I'm only considering things I've seen. So for all I know, you know, Shea Coule started flying, levitating in the air, and we didn't see it. I'm, I'm assuming not. I can only base it off of what I've seen on, on the show. But what, what, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I will say Evie, Evie had Evie has two stars, Raja. So again, and even this all-star season, the stars. I mean, I maybe they didn't peddle it, yeah, the audience viewing audiences, and, but for every turn and every point in this in the season, they were peddling this notion to us as stars. Wins don't matter. It's all about the stars. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. That's why we, as a cash, obviously we're so we're, we obsess about it so much because they're like, and every J Michelle or Rue or Carson when they would talk to them, it was like, who? It's not about the wins; it's about getting stars. So they're peddling this motion. So if you use that logic, they're saying Raj and Evie, for all intents and purposes, they were equal. So R R Evie trumping Raja so much in the final lip sync that would denote her as a winner by using their metric, their rubric for the season. I think they have the same number of stars. I don't think they have the, I don't think the, the body of work they made, I don't think it was even. Their bodies of work, in my opinion, were not even, even though they had the same amount of stars. Like for example, this is not shady, but even though you had more stars than Jinx, do you think your body of work in the season was better than her body of work? I think that, I think that in, I think in the, in Snatch Game, Jinx, shown brighter but i think if you look at my work throughout the entire season i was besides one episode i was always high or winning or you know what i mean so whereas and even in the design challenges where jinx did pretty poorly so i think i think if you average it out we were about even in my in, in my honest opinion i think that jinx had some blowout out of the fucking water moments as did i you look at jinx's a jinx's snatch game it is in my opinion one of the greatest snatch games that I have ever seen a drink. Probably the best. The best of anyone. If you look at my talent show, I think my talent show is probably one of the best talent on, on Drag Race, period. So I think there were moments where Jinx would dip low, like in design challenges, or moments where Not I... Not dip low. So, 
like in the improv one, I didn't, I wasn't as great. But out of 10, 11 challenges, I was high safe, nine of them are winning. So, you know. Well, again, it, it is it is completely subjective. And I, I just think that Raja had a better body work than Evie did throughout the season. I, it's yeah. just my opinion. Um, I do, again, I do think that Evie won this lip sync. But because I think of uh, Raja's body of work throughout the season was was really significant, and really just toward my liking, I have no problems with Raja winning uh, this title. I don't have problems with her winning it. We're just sucking, you know. I, I'm, I'm saying that I think I think I think that Raja winning was the correct decision. Is what I'm saying. Hmm. Do you think so? No, I think if you're gonna listen for the crown, is you lip syncing for the crown? Like you, your 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 performance throughout the season got you to this point. Now your lip syncing is going to make you win or not. In my opinion. Again, comment below and let us know what you think. Let's go on to um, Judah, Jinx Judah. Monsoon versus uh, Shea Coulee doing Judas by Lady Gaga. And um, I really love, I love both their looks. I don't love Shea's shoes, but everything else I love. I don't know. I can't see what shoes Jinx is wearing, but I'm assuming I don't like them because I normally don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is Jinx wearing the same hair from her? Wait. Oh, no, she's not. Um... Yeah, but she was the same color, so her hair is it often looks the same because she's always wearing the same, the, like literally the exact same color hair. Yeah, um, yeah, I, 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 I like both of their looks. I think Shay's is more of a dancey costume, especially when she does the reveal. Although that like black and white checker thing, I'm like, bitch, we we see what's popping. Well, I don't think it's supposed <laughs> to be a reveal though. It's just I don't think yeah, it's I a know. reveal. I think it's, it's not a reveal. I mean, technically, it is a reveal. You take it off to reveal to the thing underneath. No, I don't, I don't think, think taking something off constitutes it being a reveal. I think a reveal you have to be hiding. Like you have to be hiding something. Like if you take off her, if you take off her jacket, you're not revealing to your shirt. You're just taking off. Her I jacket. am. Speak for yourself. Got my nails. Damn, it's not 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 vivacious. Not not mother has arrived. Mother has arrived. <laughs> Zip. Um, um, they do Judas by Lady Gaga. And um, what do you think about this, about this lip sync? Um, people were, people were, a lot of people didn't like Jinx twirling. I did not mind. People were like, some people hate it. People hate when Jinx twirled. I didn't, I really didn't mind the twirling. Is that weird? Um, it's not weird, but <laughs> I mean, it's not weird. But like, twirling. Why do people, people hate, people are like mad. Like, bitch, why are you twirling? <laughs> Oh, and she like took her cape and she was like doing this thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. I, I, I in the room, like when we were all watching it there, it felt like, cause when we in the Queen's Gallery, we can't like see it up front. You're just kind of judging from the side, but it looks like Shay was doing like the full choreo. <laughs> Chicks was trying to so was trying to swap this bitch off the stage with her with her cloak. Yeah, Shay was doing the choreography from the from the video, which I which I do like. I think sometimes the thing about choreography that makes it look really cool is when like several people are doing it together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but I think I think I think they both did a pretty good job. I do think Shay maybe edged Jink out Jinx out just a little bit here yeah. in the performance. People were saying like Shay did like ate her. I was like, I don't know that I saw it that way, but it was a popular sentiment that I saw online that Shay like pummeled Jinx into the ground. And 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 so so this is a, this is a case in point, right? So using your thing like considering Shay's body of work and Jinx is over the season, like, so then why even have Shay lip sync against Jinx if Jinx ha was so dynamic in the season? Like, what, the only thing Shay could do to trump that would be disappearing and vanishing and, like, to, to your point, levitating off the stage. So it's like, what is, what, what if, if lip sync, for, if you're not lip syncing for the crown, if it's, it's going by the whole thing, then what's the point of Shay even trying to lip sync against Jinx? You know what I mean? Yeah, okay, and I, I, and I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with all that. You're saying, like, what's the point of even coming? Like, what's the point of even, like, that? that is but, just... But using your thing, because you say... Because like, you, you don't know what Shay could do. Like, what if Shay does something that, that literally changes the fabric of the show? What if Shay does a cultural reset? What if Shay... Does a moment that is being memed for years and years and years to come. What if Shea Kool Aid does with the Entertainment Weekly names one of the most iconic moments of reality TV of the year? That's what happened when Shasha Valor did the did the um, the flower petals. That is was literally it, what happened. In that, in that in that moment, was it all of that? Am I? First am all, I, just... I, was, I was. It was all those things I said. It. it all. The, it. It had all the accolades I just named. It was literally listed in like several magazines. Like it's like one of the most iconic reality TV moments of the past so and so. 
Um, and I think, also, I think I, later on we've we've gotten there, but in like no, when was that we, year, money. I'm telling you, I was not only I was also in, but I mean, yeah, we, we, the the meaning of a years years to come happened later on. But I think if right. you were in, I was I was in the building when it happened, and it was insane. It was insane. It was one of those things where like you had to be there. I've never the crowd was like cheering all night. The when they when when she did that, it was louder than when RuPaul came out. It was insane. People were literally, literally running around backstage screaming. I was sitting there waiting to come down to my thing, and Randy, one of the owners of World of Wonder, ran Randy Barbado. Up to me, stood at me and said, What the fuck? And started screaming. And then he ran back, and people were just going crazy. It was a massive moment. So what I'm saying is, what if Shay would have done something like that? What if? So I don't believe in being like, well, you can't do nothing anyway that's gonna make us want to like you. So don't even what well, don't even bother. Well, my point is saying what I was saying is that the reason why I think that um the Living for the Crown is like the thing of this moment, it's not taking into account everything of the season, is because of moments like this. But I mean, who's to say? I mean, the, the only way we can find out is if we you know what, let, let me let me text Rue. Let me tell him, see if he's available real quick. Maybe he can, he can, he'll come and tell us real quick. Hold on. We'll, we'll just wait till we get a response back. Um, what did you think about the lip sync? Oh, sorry. Uh, um, I thought it was good. I do. I agree with you. I think the Shay edge jinx out a little bit. Um, like watching like the overall thing of the number, and um, but I can see a justification for Jinx winning because the cloak thing and she, you know, she's committed to the song. She did her thing. I could see that, but I agree. I think I think Shay edged edge her out. Who you who you calling? Oh, I, she didn't answer for you. I'll call. Her. I'll ask her myself. Rue, do you have anything to say? I have one thing to say. Okay, well, what are you gonna? Okay, what what, what are you gonna say? I mean, we're trying Stop. to get. Stop. We're trying to do this podcast. Can you please Stop. let us do our podcast? Please. You better work. All right, I'll work. I'll I'll get back to work. She she said we should get back to work. Um, you are a, such a dumb ass. She nigga. answered. Can we go on to um? <laughs> what? What? What are you laughing at? Monet, what is your friend wearing? <laughs> she. <laughs> Monet, and I don't want to hear any bullshit. <laughs> I'm gonna start off by saying you're wearing, you're wearing a, an outfit from Work the World. I love this outfit. Domino made this. You look stunning. And then you give me this wig. Don't I have this wig now? You do have that wig. Where is it? Give my give my shit back. No, it's mine. You gave it to me. You anyway. don't know where it is. I do know where it is. It's in my wig room. Um, Did I? Don't I have this? We and, actually, we actually put no, it in the but, bargain bin at Bad Drag Queen. <laughs> the, the bar- <laughs> but what is your what is your twinner wearing? What's going on, Monet? Can you, can you, can you, can you make it make sense, please? I'm I'm literally I'm Monet I'm I'm on my I'm begging. What is you this? are you are really on some bla- you are this is you Monet. I'm begging. Please tell me what you are shaking this camera around, girl. Um, what is going on? I think Trinity is <laughs> she's wearing an outfit. I don't know what Monet. What do you think of the outfit? <laughs> Come on, we're giving opinions, Mary. I think the shoulders are wild. It looks it looks very vampirian. Like she looks like she's like a really cool vampire. Not a cool like what a do you really do the legging and the boots. I don't like the leggings. I think it would have been cute without the leggings maybe. Now does she I she, I she does a reveal to this and it's, it becomes less cumbersome, but um I think this reveal look before is a bit much. The the cloak and the like the high collar vampire collar thing is a bit much. Anyway, you all do so what by pink um and um i feel like is it just me or is like trinity is constantly involved in very sexual lip syncs oh so yeah so y'all didn't even see i was telling bob about this so what happened we is, saw monet we what do you think we saw a bit well we didn't actually no, see it but we but, knew what was happening yeah but they, it, they did not show it was what i did i i go up behind her and i grab her by the hips and I like I'm thrusting her and I'm fucking her and I'm fucking her and I pull out a, a, a cigarette and I smoke it and I flick it at the judges. It was very an vulgar. actual cigarette. Yeah. Oh, can you show cigarettes on TV? Sure, of course. I don't think maybe you can. Oh yeah, you can. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I do think I do think that you won this lip sync. 
there is a theme where where Evie is constantly like getting her ass eaten or eating. What was it? Jada Trinity, and her ass was Trinity, Trinity, Trinity. Ass. No, you, you just said Evie Trinity. You, it was when Trinity, Jada was right. standing up and Trinity slid into her ass. Yeah, lucky Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just say that out loud? <laughs> Not looking Trinity. Must be nice. Um, <laughs> how, did you, how did you feel about this website? Um, I thought it was, I had a lot of fun. I I, I I've said this multiple times to you off camera on this on this on this podcast. I really love Trinity. After All Stars, far I've really grown to. I've become very fond of Trinity, and I enjoy working with her and doing this lip sync. It was yeah, it was for to get to the next round. We also had fun doing it, and Trinity. It was great. I, I had a good time. I felt I felt really very good in the lip sync. I think you did a good job, and I think that you won this lip sync for sure. Gracias. Let's move on to uh, Monet Exchange versus Swish, uh, Swish. Jinx Monsoon doing Swish Swish by Katy Perry Yana. Okay, this look, it, am I correct? Did 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 this outfit get designed by Bianca? Oh, Jinx's? Yeah, did I make am I making that yeah, up? Yeah, you're right. You I think you're right. But look at this. That is that is a 100% a Bianca outfit. That is a Bianca silhouette down. Right? I feel like Bianca designed this. For she Jinx. did. She did. She, I think not Jinx Bianca wrote, it, team, wrote not Bianca being team Jinx. I know. That fucking bald-headed scallywag bitch. Yeah, it says, fun fun story behind this look. Bianca Rio sketched the design for this look and bequeathed it to me before filming. The Lady High created this leopard ready for everything look based on that design. It is, it is, a, very, it is a cute look. Um... It, it it is it, it does look like Jinx is dressed like Bianca. <laughs> oh, for sure. If if Jinx if Jinx would have had her up in a turban, and um, it would have been Bianca. Oh, that would have been so much nicer. Yeah, but then she looked like Jinx in Bianca the real drag. True. Um, you look stunning. I love. This. Is this is this uh Whitney? Is this black and white drag? Yeah, this is black and white drag. Whitney Newman. Py- I'm sorry, Pyretta. Uh, Perietta. Period. Yeah, why did it say Pyretta? Period. Uh, can I just say, w- once you've been doing drag long enough, you can look at stuff and be like, Joshuan, Domino. Oh, yeah. Diego, For sure. Black and White Strike. Like, you can literally, I mean, I didn't even, I was just, I was looking, I was like, I was like, oh, Black and White Strike. Like, it's, you can literally just look and be like, oh, yeah, I know who made, I literally, from a mile away, I know who made that. <laughs> um. So, this was Swish Swish by Katie Periana. And um, this can I, can I, can might I, be. What? I'm gonna say a fun about the lipstick. So when they told us what the songs were, so this was I think Trinity was telling Bob about this. I the the day that we were, the day before two days before we were learning, like we got these, we were in the in the workroom, and I given Trinity an edible. So Trinity is like she's like she's like stoned, right? She's like really high, and then oh, and, yeah, and then they give us this other so this oh, they said we're gonna be doing Swish Swish by Katy Perry, blah blah. So Trinity's in the corner with her headphones, listening to the words, and then it's the, it's in the Nikki verse, and she's like, "Ran, ran, ran, when Nikki getting tan, Mary, Mary, who's the favorite bitch on the land?" Trinity goes, "Girl, did you hear what she said in that song?" She's like, "I'm not doing that. I cannot say that on TV." Was no, she no. getting tan, or did she think Nikki was saying nigga or something? There's the part, but they bleeped out the end part. She, they bleeped out the N-word part, but also the... Wait, Nikki get, damn, man. Nikki getting tan. May remember who's the first bitch in all the land? Damn, damn man. man this is a fan. The general queen that gets a fan. Ask goodbye. I'm going to say ask goodbye. I think... I, I, I think I mean, maybe, maybe there was a part in the song I think Nikki does say the N-word. Maybe. But they did take it out. But she did not want to say Nikki getting tan. Like, she just felt weird about saying that on camera. She's like... It just felt problematic to her. And you know what? For white folk, you question everything. Question everything. Yeah. Except black people. When you, except the cops. Don't question black people. Just leave us alone. <laughs> They're like, yeah, okay. You want to question everything? No, I don't think she says nigga in this song. She, she says, says she says, to, to quote the queen, what she says is, Pink Ferragamo sliders on deck. on deck. Silly rap Silly bitches, rap bitches give me more checks. Check. My life is my the movie, movie. I'm never, never offset. Me and my amigos know not offset. Swish, swish, all I got them up upset. Up. But me and my shooters keep them like, dub, uh, we make them dance like dubstep. Step. Swish, swish, all my head is, is upset. So I, I make M's, M's they make much less. Don't be trying to double back. I already despise you. We can't both be doing it. You do the next part. 
All that fake love you showing couldn't really disguise you. Yo, yo. Ran, wan, and Nikki getting tan. And Mary Mary, who's the first bitches on the land? Damn, a man, this bitch is the stand. What is it? Moi, moi, the generous queen that kiss a fan. Ask a bye. I'm gonna be riding by. And I'm gonna tell my and I'm gonna tell my bigs, yeah, that's the guy. Was that was that what you said, niggas? Yeah, Nick. It's, it's supposed to be niggas. Oh, interesting. So Nick, so anyway. like, I, girl, I'm not saying that. So anyway, it was really funny. But then, and then she realized, like, in her high mind, she was like, she was like really over, and she like called a producer. She's like, I cannot say this on TV. Blah, blah, blah. But then it was fine. Like the next. Um. Day. So this lip sync is probably one of the most controversial lip syncs in the history in the on on the season. Let's put that on on the season. Mm-hmm. And um, the the fans were mad because it, there were there was moment. It felt like, it felt, we felt like there were big chunks of time where we couldn't see what you were doing. What was going on? The song was edited down pretty significantly. They cut out all of, they cut out pretty much Nikki's entire rap. Like the yeah. whole rap is gone. Yeah. All we heard was like, like all we heard was like, Rand, man, Nikki getting tan. Remember the first bitch on the lamp? Uh, swish, swish, bitch. And I was like, what? Yeah. First of all, cutting Nikki out of a song. If you're a DJ, listen to me right now. Any DJ in the motherfucking who can hear my voice, don't you ever in your life. In your life, switch the song before Nikki comes on. Word. Ever. You know how it feels when I'm, when I'm waiting for. Um, I, I was in a gay bar. And they played Monster. They cut it before Nikki came on. It yeah, was, that's what I it said. It was not a gay bar. It was a gay bar. No, bitch. That was a Vay bar, honey. <laughs> I was mad. Um, what was your experience with this lipstick? How did you feel about it? Um, this is to date my most proudest lip sync on Drag Race. And I've done three scenes. I've done a lot of lip syncs. I felt so good going to the lip sync. Like everything I planned to do in this number and the ones that happened organically, bitch, I felt so fucking fierce. Like I pulled out the lip sync at the top and it had Jinx. I pulled it out and revealed like I was saying her lip sync. It had Jinx's name on it. I pulled it to my makeup in it and I threw it off stage and I made her kiss my ring. And then when I, when I took, okay, so Bob, you know this, in Drag Race lip syncs, when you do lip sync, like a lot of the... Uh, the the crew, they come and watch the lip sync because it's a big, you know, everyone loves the lip sync on the show. For this one, this is the, the final Queen of Queens one. When I tell you, every single person who worked on Drag Race came and was watching in the room for the lip sync. Like, I mean, it was like we were at, bitch, it's like we were on the sibling rivalry tour and we had sold out New York City all over again. Everybody was there watching the lip sync. So, bitch, we had like a, a legit audience, right? And then like when I threw, took the money up and I threw it in the air, the the audience the girl you can you can kind of hear in the girls microphones every, everyone was like oh i did that and then um during the nikki part during the rapping part i am not kidding i told you this jinx literally stopped and you got, got people are asking us to watch she stopped and watched me doing the rap she was like and when she I, thought, when I would say that i'm not saying you're wrong when i talk to jinx jinx keeps being like that is not she keeps being like Jinx was when Jinx said that she stopped and looked at you during the the spoken word. That's what Jinx, this is according to Jinx. Then they can ask. I mean, I, the only way is, is to get a, one of these girls on here who were there watching it and asking them. Jinx absolutely stopped. And then, um, yeah, and then I did that little Vogue, that little um, catwalk at the end. I felt really great. I felt really great. Like after we finished the lip sync. The, the, the everyone was clapping and Jinx and I hug and she goes to me, congratulations, girl. You you did it. Monet. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. She ripped that wig onto next. other wigs. And maybe you can get Jinx on the podcast. She was like, she said, Congratulations, Monet. Really, really good. We, job. You don't don't ever mention having any girls from All Star Seven on this podcast. I know. Just you, first of all, keep your mouth shut. Bitch. Don't, get us, <laughs> don't bleep that. Bleep that whole section. We hugged each other, and she goes, "Congratulations, girl. You really, you really did that." No, oh, she didn't say you did that. Something to that effect. And I was like, she bitch, said, "You are the queen of all queens." She's, I was like, and I was if like, I win, I will abdicate the crown to you. <laughs> I was like, I was like, no, congratulations to you. You are, you were amazing as well. And then that was for the last moment. Well, you did, you did a really good job. I do, I do think that you won that lip sync, and you did a really, really good job, and you look stunning doing it. I really like this outfit. I had Whitney made this outfit for me again for the All Star Seven premiere. Why do you have another one? Not the same one. I got it in like a cow print. Oh, yeah. I was like, what? Why would you do that? 
Mm-mm. You know, Tom gets two of his all of his outfits made, so he can he can save one like it's mint condition. The other one he wears, smart. But also, sometimes it's hard getting one outfit from a designer. I'm about to say, I'm about to say, bitch, what? Imagine if we try to get two of our outfits from tour. Girls, sometimes getting one outfit is you are doing the Lord's work to get a designer to make one Hello. outfit. Anyways, so um, Jinx Monsoon um, wins uh, the season, and she is crowned the queen of all queens. Queen of all queens. Um, and Raja is crowned uh, yeah. the queen of she, the first and the only queen of she didn't already have. We don't know. On, oh, well, we, um, maybe yeah. For right now, only there may be more. Who knows? Yeah. Um, and um, this was a really great season of Drag Race. How did you feel about it? I feel really proud of what I of what I did this season. I felt really great about my challenges. I was able to do opera on on Drag Race, and millions of people see it. And because of that, you know, some really fun stuff is coming my way because of some classical stuff. But I'm just proud of my overall package. I think I looked great. I think I was. I thought I did a great job this season. I'm immensely proud of myself and what I did. I agree. You did a great job. This is you did a great job. This was a great season. I really enjoyed watching this season. I had a blast. This How does it stack very, very, in All Stars for you? Um, I'm gonna give this the there's seven All Stars. This is the this is number two. All Stars two is still one. All Stars two is still just such a great. That was Do-a. there was so Do-a. many twists and turns during that season. It was like because All Stars one is at the end. All Stars one is number seven, right? Oh, yeah. Like Mama, this is garbage. Um, All Stars two was just. It was almost it was almost like watching Drag Race when the queens don't care what the fans think again. Uh-huh. It was almost like that. Yeah, I bet you. I felt it was like that. Yeah, it was it was wild. Like girls were bribing people. I was like, "What is going on?" It was great. All Stars Two was great. Congratulations, Monet. Congratulations, girl. You really did it. No, um, congratulations. You did it. You did a really a really good job. You, I, I, I hope you're proud. I really hope you are. I am. I am, Bob. I am. Brew, do you have anything to say? I have one thing to say. Oh, okay. Do, do, what do you, what do you want to say? Do you think that we should like the anything well, you want to say to? I just love Monet Exchange. <sighs> Macaroni. Yes, honey. So we're Bob. We finally finished All Star Seven. We did. I think we should. We, we should. It. So here's the thing. I, mean, I think we can, we can have a real conversation with the fans right now. Do we do some advisories or do we start something else? I think we should well, do some advisories until All Stars 14. The world next. Ooh. But when does that start? Canada. Uh, Canada versus the world premieres November 18th. So I don't know. I think we you might be um, traveling when that yeah, premieres. Yeah, I will. I may be traveling. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, I love you all so much. And I love you, uh, Monet. And, I love you too, um, Bob. We will see you all. Whether whether we're giving advice or talking about more shows, we'll, we'll hear, you'll hear from us very soon. Twice a week right here. On something robbery. Yeah.